Bad Boys Ride or Die is now. The reviews on the channel, go check that out. But right here, I'm ranking all four Bad Boys movies. Before I get started, though, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel. It's free to do so. It helps me out. Let's get to number four. This might be a hot take, but Bad Boys 2 is coming in last place. Honestly, it's just my least favorite. You know, I still like it and find it to be decent and not bad. But, you know, it's just not one that I'll go back to as often because I watched them all for the first time uh, two months ago. I mean, I watched the third one when it first released, but I've never seen any of the other ones. So two months ago was my first time watching all these back to back to back. And I feel like this one just didn't hit as many highs as the other one did. I mean, as I said, it's my least favorite of the bunch, but I, I really do think that all the Bad Boys movies are pretty good. You know, I mean, they don't have any bad movies in their franchise, and they're all pretty easy watches. I see some people, you know, comparing these to, like, Fast and Furious franchise, and, you know, this is so much better than the Fast and Furious franchise. The Fast and Furious franchise did start pretty good, but once you got to, I don't know, once you got to maybe, like, number five or number four, it started to just get really average going on hill, but I think these are just have so much fun, so much banter, so much charisma in these movies to really enjoy them. But I will say, yeah, Bad Boys 2 is my least favorite. I think the biggest negative I can give it is that it's just way too long. It's like two and a half hours almost, and I felt like it was just dragging a lot. I felt like the plot could have been wrapped up in, you know, an easy like two hours, maybe a little less than two hours. You didn't have to do all that, all that side stuff and all that. Sure, it was fun, but honestly, I felt like those extra 20 minutes didn't really do a lot to really get the movie going you know even higher for me i felt like we were already at a pretty high point and you know i thought that those side plot points didn't do much for me personally i will say the action though is more round, well rounded here than in the first one like the highway chase and the end fight scene was really well done especially since it's from michael bay who's basically known for these bombastic action sequences he did direct this one and he directed the first one but the thing that the thing that kills it for me here is that there doesn't seem to be as much banter between mike and marcus compared to the first entry which got me like really excited to watch the second one because the first one was so good the banter was there i was like they gotta have more banter in this one but there was less banter i mean don't get me wrong the chemistry is still there but there just wasn't enough banter and i will say that the, you know one of the it has one of the best scenes in the whole series so i gotta give it that it has the whole reggie interrogation hilarious stuff when they're when they both say hold on how old are you and he's like 15 and he's like she you look 30 like that was one of the that's probably like the best scene of the whole series so i gotta give it to them but still bad boys 2 is my least favorite of the bunch Bad Boys for Life comes in third place, and since now we have a fourth entry, this is probably the worst titled Bad Boys movie because it implies that they're basically done. This is basically their retirement. But since it made like 500 million, they had to keep going. This one kind of had a this one sounded special because it came out like right before the pandemic started, right before theaters closed. So this is probably this is like the biggest movie uh, from that time period, which is awesome to see. It made so much money. This one had new directors with Adil and Bilal, which I think that that was needed because as much as I liked Michael Bay's like uh, maniac kind of style in these movies, I feel like eh, there's some stuff that was new to be needed because it came out, you know, so many years after the second one. So, you know, after, you know, the series being gone for so long, I think we needed, you know, new directors. And I think that it worked here. It's not just flashy, but I thought it was more smooth and the camera angles were quite nice. And I will say it's easily the most uh, emotional bad boys movie with Mike, you know, almost dying. He gets shot by his son who he doesn't know it's a son at the time, which was a twist that I did like. It added more heart and tension to the overall movie in the series and the final fight with both of them. So there was a lot more heart in this one. Captain Howard's death was a huge surprise. I didn't think I didn't think he was dead because I thought there was like pulling another fake out, you know, Mike Mike's death. We all, we all thought, you know, Mike was dying, but he came back. So I thought Captain Howard's death was a fake out. But no, indeed, he did bite the buzz. He did uh, bite the dust, which, which is interesting. An interesting decision, but I did like how ballsy the decision was the whole the whole airplane sequence also was pretty hilarious when they when they said we fly together we die together and the other guy's reaction was great the, the bro really thought they were going to bomb the plane and the new supporting characters the ammo characters were great you know vanessa hudgens charles melton alexander ludwig i think they're all great additions here you know it's not um it's not something that i'll probably go back to a lot because i feel like it was paced pretty poorly at some points but i, I did still like it more 
than the second entry. The first Bad Boys comes in second place, and let's be real, this this series, uh, how we've watched all four of these movies, we gotta just say, it's not the greatest writing, like the screenplay isn't great, but we're not really going into this movie for great screenplay, and I couldn't, I gotta be honest with you with this one too, I couldn't care less about the female supporting characters in this one, and the mystery of the plot, like Julie, which is one of the main supporting characters in this one, she just kept pissing me off because she kept pulling the most annoying stuff in this movie like just stay safe and stay out of the way like marcus is trying to help you stay safe and you just will not you know listen to him it, it's it's so annoying when they have such an annoying uh you know character in this movie but i will say michael bay is manic directing with a 19 million dollar budget made it even better people in the 90s were probably losing their minds at some of those acts and they were like how are they doing this and i'm just sitting here i'm like this is pretty good action but i've seen better i mean they have that they have that great uh nightclub scene in these movies and this one had a great nightclub scene too and i love the part where uh, marcus had to pretend that he was mike in a scene with kind of the apartment manager guy that was a you know a really well written scene and the comedic timing was just electric i i loved marcus and mike in this one their banter was so great will smith and martin lawrence you know they captured everything in this first movie and they were just off the charts bouncing off each other it's some very very hilarious one-liners in here i think that this is some of their best banter yet and even though it's not the best action in this series i will say that that's because they were limited with that you know small budget but it still has a lot of great action it's very rewatchable i'd say i i really just did enjoy it though my biggest gripe on it was the uh supporting female characters though i just don't think they were written well and they kind of just seemed pretty annoying surprisingly coming in first place is bad boys ride or die which is the newest entry and i wasn't expecting this i wasn't expecting this to be this good but oh my oh my i had a smile across my face the whole entire movie while i was watching i saw this in imax for the first showing and then i was like this is so damn good i'm seeing it another time the same night i, I, I usually wait a day to go see a movie again if i liked it but I just had to go see it again because it's the definition of our summer movie, summer blockbuster. It's super fun, easy to watch, full of bombastic action with hilarious jokes. And you can enjoy it with a full family if you'd like. Like everyone was cracking up in my theater. So many laugh out loud jokes. Marcus, you know, being dumb like he is. Mike just like looking at him like, oh my God, I'm tired of your bullshit. But it's, it's so funny. It, it might be the funniest one out of all four of them. And the direction I think is just so much better compared to the third entry. You get like POV shots of Mike and marcus like shooting people then it turns back around pretty cool drone shots too and the pov shots that i'm talking about you can actually go look up the behind the scenes of kind of how uh, will smith is kind of controlling the whole camera rig by himself it's really cool how they did all that i love the camera work here i thought it was really well done i thought that you know i thought the cinematography is also great the score was pretty good and i really love the character switch up here with uh, marcus you know marcus usually isn't like a badass but here he was a true badass because he thought like throughout the whole movie he was thinking i can't die i'm invincible so he just goes in uh, guns 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 a blazing while mike is really dealing with panic attacks in the past kind of haunting him because he was there for captain howard's death he got shot so the past is haunting him he deals with panic attacks while marcus is just running around having the time of his life it's a really great journey for both of them really great uh, character journey and you get to see more growth with uh, mike and his son in this one which i really did like they they have like a trio right here running from the cops running from the law and all that really did like that storyline eric dana's the villain thought he was pretty good but i kind of wanted more you know villainous side come out of him in this one but then you have um right before you go into the final action sequence there's a bad boys song needle drop that oh my god that got me so hyped that might, might be one of my favorite scenes of the year it's so small but it's so great when you have a scene that just hypes you up so much and yeah i got to talk about reggie you know we were missing reggie for the third one a little bit he was in that one just a little bit but they brought him back here and he, he's actually in a decent amount here not gonna try i'm not gonna spoil his big moments but he has one action sequence here and here that got me so excited for him and he did so great you know he, he's the true mvp of this series and number two he has one of the best scenes this one he has one of the best scenes he he just had his moment in here and we end the film off with him in such a funny hilarious moment and i i honestly would be down for a fifth one give me a fifth one give me a sixth one if they just get better and better it's so much better than the fast and furious franchise i don't know how they do it will smith and martin lawrence are just gods so yeah bad boys ride or die is my favorite one yet that's my ranking of all the bad boys movie leave your um, ranking down below in the comments if you did enjoy this video make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out